Gender, Money and Finance. The title of this session is Central Bank Decisions by Committee. Does Gender Matter? Recently, Isabel Schnabel, Executive Board Member of the ECB, said in an interview that it makes such a big difference to the tone and to decision making if another woman is present in a meeting. The reality is that since the start of the Euro, the governing council was dominated by men by a vast majority. Since the establishment of the ECB, only five out of 24 executive board members have been female. And among all central bank governors represented in the governing council, over the last two decades, only one was female and uh, those uh, who have spent a longer time in this community remember that this was Sirka Hemmelainen from the Bank of Finland. No surprise, a representative of a Nordic country. In the meantime, uh, Christine Lagarde and Isabel Schnabel have uh, raised these ratios slightly, but at least there is some progress into the right direction. So it is quite obvious that the central bank community, especially when it comes to decision-making bodies, is still male dominated. In fact, this feeling is also very familiar to me when I had the possibility to participate in diverse committees, regardless of which institution, be it the BIS, the IMF, the European Investment Bank, the EBRD, or the famous Monetary Policy Committee of the Eurosystem. Be it an exchange of views with professors from universities or local research institutes. In nine out of 10 times, you end up in a setting mostly surrounded by men, especially when you're working on a topic which is closely related to money and finance. At the beginning of my career, I thought that things would change and that if all female students who I met at university or during my postgraduate studies would show up after a while in one or the other committee, but they didn't. The idea for this conference of today was born two years ago when Ernest Knan, head of the economics division of the Austrian Central Bank and a colleague of mine, and I were sitting once again in a meeting held by a male dominated committee. We got to work and here we are today. We are extremely proud that many successful women on the, of the money and finance community have joined us today. Each of the three following sessions will be chaired by a female director of the Austrian Central Bank. Karin Turner-Hurlitschka, Petja Niederländer and me. Three women at the director's level is definitely a success story. However, this success story is relativized by the fact that the ÖNB currently has an all-male governing board. And while 40% of ÖNB staff are female, only 26% of managers are women. Yet, we have demonstrated last year that deliberate action can bring forward a change. An incentive scheme to promote women on expert career tracks helped to raise the share of women in expert careers from 35% in 2020 to 38% one year later. Going beyond this specific example, gender-related activities at the ÖNB have a long-standing long -standing tradition. This has been further strengthened by the fact that since 2015, the Austrian Federal Equal Treatment Act also applies to the ÖNB. Therefore, we have a legally binding action plan for the advancement of women in place. But let me come back to the beginning of my, of my opening remarks 
as this session will explicitly deal with the question, central bank decisions by committee, does gender matter? The current underrepresentation of women makes it difficult to precisely estimate the effects of female presence in decision-making bodies. The crucial question is whether mixed management teams actually reach better outcomes, make more balanced deliberations, and are more resistant to political pressure. I'm convinced that my guests uh, will bring some clarification to these open questions as they either work in academia or have top positions in central banking. And here I want to come back to what Christine has said before. So obviously there are not many men under, uh, in the first uh, line uh, as uh, governors representing a central bank, but there are much more in the second row to so to say. So uh, there are much more uh, women uh, holding the position of a deputy governor uh, or a vice governor. And therefore, uh, they will be present today in my panel and I very much welcome Paola Profeta, professor from the Bocconi University, Ranvei Siguradottir, deputy governor of the Central Bank of Iceland, Sylvie Goulart, vice governor of the Banque de France, and Anna Ivkovic, Vice Governor of the National Bank of Serbia. Warm welcome to all of you. This panel will be organized as follows. We will have two rounds of questions and uh, questions from the audience afterwards. The first round uh, of uh, this panel is dedicated uh, to the question, how do national central banks fare in terms of gender equality? And the question goes to all four panelists uh, and they will bring up, bring in their, their, their the situation in their central bank, um, how their central banks deal with this topic. Uh, maybe also uh, a comparison. Is there a difference to commercial banks, for instance? Is there a difference to international institutions? And is it an issue at all? Uh, to give us first an introduction into the topic, I asked Paola, uh, being a professor and uh, published a lot of research uh, on this issue, uh, to make uh, an introduction into this. Paola, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thanks for organizing the session and for giving me the possibility to introduce this topic. Uh, I would like to uh, share uh, just uh, a couple of slides to give you an idea about uh, uh, the presence of women uh, in uh, on central banks and in particularly on uh, uh, monetary policy committees uh, across countries, which are uh, the bodies where we decide the, the, the central bank policies. First of all, uh, I, I'm going to present you this, uh, this data. Uh, this data came from, uh, from a research uh, which I have conducted with uh, Donato Machandaro and Davide uh, Romelli uh, recently, uh, where we collected uh, data on 103 countries around the world from 2002 to 2016. And uh, we know uh, the gender of uh, uh, members of the monetary policy committees uh, in all, uh, in all these countries. So in this picture, you see uh, that there is a, la uh, um, a large uh, um, heterogeneity across the different countries with respect to the presence uh, of uh, women. And so this is actually what we, we were interested in, in, understand, in order to understand, you know, as you asked, the, the current situation. So the picture is quite informative. Uh, we see that uh, um, there are uh, countries where actually there are no women uh, in uh, around, uh, so zero women on monetary policy committees. And this is around, uh, we, we can count around 40% of our uh, sample in this situation. Uh, on average, the presence of women is at around 
13%. Uh, and there are uh, countries performing much better than others. For example, we have uh, uh, Canada or Sweden, uh, where the percentage of women, uh, I mean, the, 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 the gender is almost balanced. So we are at around 50, uh, 55% also. But even in countries like uh, Serbia and Bulgaria, we will certainly uh, talk later, uh, there is a high presence of, uh, of women. So um, we see here, uh, it was not easy to collect all the data because we had to collect from different sources like central bank, uh, annual reports, uh, websites, etc. So the, the data collection was uh, uh, quite challenging. But the picture is, uh, uh, as I told you, a little bit heterogeneous, but uh, you know, there is a lot, of, a lot of variety across the different countries. And uh, let me show you also um, in, uh, in, the next, uh, in the next slide, um, the evolution over time. So we see here in the, in the slide that the evolution of women on monetary policy committees uh, over time. And uh, as I told you, uh, there is, a, um, there, uh, there is a, a large increase. So we see that uh, the share uh, of women uh, starting from 11% uh, uh, reaches on average in all the countries around the 16%. So there is an evolution going in the direction of having more women on boards. Uh, although we have also to, to stress, uh, to emphasize that uh, the average size of the board remains uh, very similar. So it remains at around seven members. So thus increase of women does not mean that there is an expansion of the number uh, of members uh, of the board. If uh, we concentrate, for example, in the next slide on women governor or deputy uh, over time, you see a very similar evolution. So there is a large increase. In particular, um, uh, we see an increase, for example, of governor after 2012, a sharp increase. It was stable in the first part of, our, uh, of, our, of the period that we, uh, that we considered. Um, so, uh, in this picture, uh, I concentrate on different, let's say, um, situations. So, uh, boards uh, where we have uh, uh, zero women, they are uh, at, the, at the bottom. At the bottom, you see um, a proportion of the countries that have never had a woman in their uh, monetary policy committees. And this is very stable uh, across, uh, across the years. While there is much variation for the others. So in this period, for example, uh, we see that 20% of, uh, of the countries never appointed a, a woman to their monetary policy committee, uh, while um, in, every, uh, in every single uh, year, around 50% of the countries have uh, no, uh, no women. But the percentage of central banks with only one woman uh, seems to decrease over time because there is an increase, uh, you, you, you will see in the other part, uh, in the number of uh, um, central banks with uh, uh, two or more, uh, or more um, women on, uh, on boards. Okay, and there's another interesting, uh, let's say, just to add to our picture, another interesting uh, uh, idea is when we, uh, when the, we divide, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, um, this, uh, uh, this analysis which was conducted uh, around the world, when we divide by geographical area. So uh, you see here on the left um, the, the picture for, um, for boards on monetary policy uh, on uh, in different parts of the uh, different parts of the world, uh, and uh, uh, and on the on the right uh, by income group. So there is a, a very large increase in women board members in uh, North America. We notice this. Uh, NA is North America, and I here compare the situation in 2002 and 2016. While in Europe, Central Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, it's a kind of uh, a small uh, contraction, so there is not this uh, clear increase. But when we divide, for example, with the level of income, it's even more interesting because while the high income countries seems to have, you know, this sharp increase and in low income countries, it's actually uh, the other way around. So the partner is a little bit different. And that this is done, you know, by using different, uh, different robust specifications for, uh, for the level of income. 
So, um, in our work, we also try to uh, understand uh, the reasons. So, of course, this is very important because we will see later on that the presence of women on monetary policy committees may have actually may matter in terms of uh, outcomes, in terms of decisions, etc. So, we will see this later. But for the moment, since we want to concentrate a little bit on the picture and the current situation, uh, uh, we also uh, try to understand and perform an analysis, try to understand what are the main determinants of the presence of women uh, on, uh, um, on uh, uh, this uh, decision bodies uh, of uh, uh, central banks. So um, when we look at, uh, uh, when we look at, uh, at this, uh, uh, you know, determinants, uh, there are actually, we, we, we can think about several variables which may matter when you want to explain the presence of women. For example, uh, the general gender gap in, uh, in the society, in the economy, something which we capture with uh, the so-called gender gap index. So uh, an indicator of, you know, the situation of men and women uh, and the situation of women in, uh, in the economy uh, in general, in the country capture, uh, in this case, we use the index by the word economic forum, but of course, there are many, uh, many other indicators. So we, uh, we would like to understand whether this uh, makes a difference. So countries which are traditionally, for example, uh, more um, less open to the presence of women in the economy and in general have lower labor force participation of female or, uh, you know, uh, higher glass ceiling, etc. If this also means that these countries are, have a lower share, uh, a lower presence of women on monetary policy committees but actually we do not find such a relationship. So it doesn't seem that this is related uh, at least significantly with uh, the presence of women on monetary policy committees. We also look at, for example, the role of central bank independence. And here again, we don't find uh, a, a strong, um, significant relationship between, you know, the level of independence and, uh, and the presence of women. Uh, so uh, we, um, that this is a kind of uh, regression that we have run by using um, income fixed effect, uh, uh, the year fixed effect, of course, it's only a correlation between the presence of women on uh, monetary policy committees and some uh, of these uh, determinants. But it's, uh, the, the result is very robust because we use the different techniques uh, to estimate the share of the the share of women on monetary policy committees. Another, for example, uh, another variable which may matter is the level of income. So we take also the level of income into account or the legal, or legal origin, because we know from other studies uh, on gender that the presence of women may be related you know, to the type of origin of the country. So even historically determined, etc. So what really, and this was, uh, uh, I mean, the message that I would like to transmit now, what really the only determinant that seems to be uh, significant in explaining the presence of women, the share of women, is uh, the so-called, what here you see as uh, um, staff gender vision. So the, um, the presence of women in general in, uh, in, um, as employed uh, at the central banks. So the staff gender ratio is positively and significantly related to the presence of women on monetary policy committees. So the idea here is it's, it's basically the only variable that matters. All the other things that probably they are mixed up. It's not very clear uh, how to identify a determinant here. But uh, what seems to be important is that that in, if in a central bank there is a kind of a, also a pipeline or a number of women that work there, so that are employed, that they are uh, among the staff, this is positively related to the presence uh, on monetary policy committees, also the decision uh, in the decision committee. So um, this seems to us also very interesting in terms of uh, you know uh, recommendation because the idea if we want to increase the gender balance in decision making positions and this uh, position. Uh, we probably have to start from the staff. We probably have to start also from the bottom and have more women in those institutions, not just having women uh, in uh, on the, uh, on uh, on the on the committees so on the board, so uh, at the at the top. But we need really to enlarge the presence of women. So this is one of the results of uh, of this research. 
here you see different uh, specifications, let's say, because I, I measure the share of women, but also the potential share of women, because, of course, you know that um, in many cases, uh, you know, uh, the, the number of, um, uh, of members of, the, uh, of these committees uh, for some time are vacant, uh, and so we, uh, we, we want also to control for this possibility. So in the columns one to three, we really estimate the share, the current share of women, the determinants of the current share of women. In four, five, six, we estimate uh, the potential share of women. So taking into account the fact that if there are vacant positions, they are, uh, we assume uh, them to be occupied by, uh, by men. And in seven, eight, and nine, I consider the so-called order logic. So the probability to see a woman uh, in the monetary policy committees. But the result that I showed you before, that I told you before, that what matters is the staff generation is robust to all specification, is very consistent. So it seems that there is a clear relationship between central bank staff ratio and the share of women on monetary policy committee. When I move, uh, uh, and uh, uh, this is my last part for, for the moment, when I move to women governor or deputies, so we concentrate really uh, not on the share in the entire committees, but only uh, at the share of women governor or deputy governor uh, here, what, uh, what I see is that, again, uh, this subgender ratio is the only variable which is positively and significantly related to the share of women uh, in columns one, two, three, to the number of women in columns four, five, six, and to the presence of women. So to a dummy variable, which indicates the presence of a woman as a governor or a deputy governor. So uh, again, uh, it is true. Uh, so in this particular context, when we want to understand what is the current situation of the presence of women in, on boards of monetary policy committees, it is true that in general, you know, history, uh, gender gaps, uh, the presence of the level of income uh, of the country matter for uh, the presence of women, for a gender balance, that let's say, leadership situation, as in this case. But in our case, when we control, when we really go a little bit deeper into understanding the determinants, those factors does not seem to play a crucial role. Probably because, of course, the countries, uh, I mean, the estimation is very demanding, so the countries have their own uh, peculiarities, they, are, uh, they, uh, they have their own specificities, but when we could take all these variables into account, what matters is, seems to be really the composition of, uh, of the workforce at the, uh, at the level of the institution, which seems very interesting because it gives us the it, it leaves us with the idea that if we want to have more women in decision making positions uh, on these institutions, we really need to prepare, let's say, a better uh, better condition, better context, and uh, have more um, have a larger presence of women even in uh, in, the, in the rest of um, of uh, um, of the uh, of the staff. So uh, that is to uh, introduce, of course, if you, if you have questions on uh, you know, the, our data and the way we conducted this, uh, uh, the way we conducted this, uh, this research, this is uh, available as a working paper, but of course, I will be also happy to, to, answer, uh, to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you, Paola. It's interesting to see that uh, this uh, staff generation uh, is uh, has such a good explanation for uh, uh, for our question uh, as uh, very often governors and uh, deputy governors uh, uh, do not come are growing out of the staff uh, of a central bank uh, very often they have a totally uh, a complete uh, different career beforehand uh, before they uh, become uh, governor or vice governor of a central bank. But I think it's interesting to see that there is obviously a correlation uh, in between these uh, two variables. Thank you for that. Now I come to Ranvei uh, Sigur Dardotir, Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Iceland. And Ranvei uh, has uh, published uh, recently uh, in an OMFIF publication on gender balance. Uh, and uh, she will uh, tell us a little bit about her uh, results. I just, uh, before I uh, start talking about the, uh, the Central Bank of Iceland and how we are doing, I just want to say that in general, I think 
the central bank world is moving in the right direction. Uh, and in the recent years, we have made great strides in many areas. And we need only mention the two women who spoke just now, both of them leaders of powerful, powerful institutions. And of course, a woman has chaired the US Federal Reserves. And as it, because as it was stressed in the first session, it is enormously important for us all uh, that women have role models. But we know also that even though this glass ceiling has been broken at the top level of some institutions, we need to do far better. Uh, in her discussion on this year's OMFIF Gender Balance Index, the chief economist Danai Kiriakopoulou mentions that while the new gender equality was lacking in the central bank world, after they saw the index results, they were surprised to see how little had progressed, little progress had been made. So reading the report, it makes it very clear that how much of a man's world the central bank still are. Uh, but even though they, the banks are still in many ways men's world, we know that institutions benefit from giving a diverse group the opportunity to affect the decision making process. In order for this to happen though, um, much more progress and forward thinking equal rights policy is needed. Uh, I think it is very interesting to hear Paula's uh, results that the uh, um, that the staff level uh, or the gender composition of staff matters, which uh, is uh, encouraging as uh, for, uh, for Iceland, for example, because we have a, a, a around 50, we have circa 50-50% women and men uh, at the uh, uh, staff. Uh, but um, uh, when we are thinking about what we have to do to, to, to to do better, uh, we clearly need to examine the policies in place in connection with hiring and opportunities for advancement. Uh, we must ensure that the hiring and advancements are not governed by informal communication channels, which men have generally used to a greater effect than women. So coaching or, or mentorship pro programs are needed in order to put young women on a path towards influence in the field. Uh, we must also see to it that women have access to recruiting processes and are brought in for interviews. Uh, there are paths open for improvement for all central banks and we must implement policies to ensure that more women follow those paths. Turning to the Central Bank of Iceland, I often say that the Central Bank of Iceland has been more of a follower than a leader. Iceland, has, as a country, has generally been a leader in equal rights matters. For 12 years, Iceland has ranked at the top of the World Economic Forum's Global Gender Index, Global, gap report, global Gender Gap <laughs> Report, and gender equality has become one of the cornerstones of the national consciousness. So leaps forward in gender equality tend to take place in politics and the central bank then follows by implementing equality measures. So overall, I would say uh, though that the central bank performs well in the area of gender equality. I became the first female deputy governor in the bank's history and now two of the three deputy governors are women. By the same token, the gender ratio among departmental directors and other executives is more or less equal. And the bank has made a concerted effort to be a family friendly and equality friendly workplace. Employees have flexible working hours and the COVID pandemic has enabled us to experiment with remote working to a greater degree. Although as we know, this can be a and could turn out to be a double-edged sword, but that is uh, um, uh, for something that for another discussion. So gender equality issues are m very much affected by condition in societies. Uh, I, that's my point. Even though uh, Paula's research does not 
does not sh sh show any clear cu clear clear um, uh, cut uh, the, there. But uh, if, uh, for, for if you look at this from our point of view in Iceland, I, it's it's obvious that if arrangement, for example, for preschool had not been changed in the mid 90s, and if childbirth leave had not been shared by both parents from 2000 onwards, I'm sure the progress made in women's labor for participation and elevation to position of positions of authority would not have been so rapid. So the role of the central bank or any other employer for that matter is to work within its own walls to make the most of the possibilities created by these developments. Uh, the most recent progress was made when the central bank implemented an unequal pay standard, which is one of the recent milestones in legislation on equality in Iceland. Now all companies and institutions with 25 or more employees are required to implement equal pay standard and undergo an audit to demonstrate that they offer equal pay for work of equal value. The purpose of the equal pay standard is to better enforce legislation prohibiting gender-based discrimination. And this standard has developed, was de developed uh, by the Icelandic trade unions, the employers confederation and the government for the purpose of helping employers prevent salary discrimination. As adopting a more transparent pay system and re-evaluating jobs should uncover differences in pay offered to men and women for work of equal value. So the Central Bank of Iceland received this form of equal pay certification in 2019. The analysis done that year showed that gender-based pay gap was just under 2% in favor of men, down from 3.2% two years earlier. On the other hand, the results of the 2020 pay analysis shows that women are paid one and a half percent more than men, but this difference is though too small to be statistically significant, and the results therefore indicate that there is no unexplained gender bias pay gap at the bank. I myself believe that the equal pay standard is a positive tool. It is a tool that hopefully will help us correct the gender bias, but it, we must be vigilant so as to ensure that it is truly an effective tool against gender bias pay gaps and not just a meaningless stamp on a piece of paper or a cheaply bought remission of sins. So to sum up, we have had pro good progress here at the bank. The share of women in most key positions during the past decade has been 30 to 55 percent. Among specialists at the bank, as I said before, the gender ratio is almost equal. And I would like to conclude with just saying that central banks are recipients of culture or legislation, as also was discussed in the first session. And as I have also demonstrated regarding the Central Bank of Iceland, but the Central Bank of Iceland, as other central banks, must not confine themselves to being passive recipients. They should act. They should act no later than today uh, and implement progressive policies with measurable outcome, outcomes so diversity can thrive. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ranve, for your contribution. Um, at the first contribution of Paola, uh, she focused on uh, elements uh, of inside the central bank. Uh, um, you also brought in uh, all these elements uh, of uh, private life. Uh, so how a society organizes uh, private life, uh, starting from childcare, mentioned by you. Uh, and I would also add, for instance, uh, taxation. So the legal situation, how income is taxed. I now come to Sylvie Goulart, vice governor of the Banque de France. Sylvie, France is 
is well known for uh, a better child care, especially when it comes to uh, kids, small kids, uh, kids uh, at school, ground school. Uh, obviously, you have a little bit a better regime which gives uh, women more leeway uh, to organize both uh, profession, career, and, and private life having kids. Uh, What's your experience uh, now as a vice governor in your institution? How do the women manage? Well, first of all, uh, Servus to the Österreichische Nationalbank. Thank you very much, Doris, for organizing this. I'm glad to be in this uh, circle. I just want to say one word to Paula and her presentation, which is a very important issue. Of course, I'm in a conflict of interest and don't see anything negative in what I'm going to say. The fact that there are so many female deputies, is it sure that we have reached a goal? Because you may know that uh, deputies don't talk, don't take the floor and don't decide on monetary policy. I, I just end the footnote. I wanted to say that. Well, it's, this is the stock. Because if you look at the way it increases, you have the impression that it can be fabulous because you go from quite zero to nothing. Huh? Here you have the ECB, the Fed, and the Bank of England, the stock of governors since 1998 for the ECB, since 1960 for uh, the Fed, and 1997 for the Bank of England. So if you look at these figures, I think it is quite sure, uh, and it's from uh, an excellent study made by Claudiana Istrefi and Julia Sistieri, two women with foreign background origins, I'm proud of that, uh, work and uh, so this is where we are. Then next slide, please. Even better, no talk, just pictures. Look at this. On the left hand side, you have Christine Lagarde when she began at the ECB at a dinner uh, with uh, the governors and the members of the board. At that time, Isabel Schnabel was not yet there. The only women you can see are on the walls in the pictures of uh, the previous centuries. It's in a German castle, but no, no women seated around. On the right hand side, this is um, the one of the last G7 finance ministers and central bank governors. Uh, it was before the pandemics. Uh, last year, it was not possible. Kristalina and Christine were not in charge at that moment. So you can try to find, if you find one woman, it's at the Schloss of Chantilly, None of them. Then next slide, please. Slide. Thanks. Here you have the, the number of uh, female Euro area governor since uh, uh, the beginning of the century quite. And you will see that the only winner is Cristala Gorgaggi, who was the governor of the Central Bank of Cyprus. She has left and now you have no, no women among the governors. So it's a real glass ceiling. Sometimes I would quite say a steel ceiling. And why does it matter? Because it's not just because we are a group of women who wanted to get the power. Please, we move to the next slide. The reason why this is the, the impact of the COVID crisis on women. If you look on the first chart on the left hand side, you have, of course, the great financial crisis. Male were impacted. But the COVID one impacted more female workers and you observe the same in the United States. You can observe on the left hand side um, in the bottom that we had more than uh, we had 75 percent of women in healthcare and social assistance. So they were at the front at the time where there were no masks, no protection, nothing. Here you have a huge majority of of women. And on the right hand side, you see also the involuntary part-time workers in activities uh, because of the pandemics in tourism, in uh, services, in restaurants, cafe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the reason why it matters, it's not just the legal aspect, the fact that in all our countries we, we want and we believe that uh, there is equality between men and women. But it is also because we may not take the right decisions for the society or not be perceived by the society as representing them, I understanding them. And that's the reason why things have to change. So I finish with just the Banque de France, Doris, to answer to your question. As you ask about France, 
okay, French women are quite privileged. I have the feeling I benefited myself. I have three children. And I know that in other countries, it is sometimes... Could we move, please, to the last slide? Thank you. So what did we do at the Banque de France? We help uh, to uh, a good balance between work and family life. And here, I must confess, it is not just an issue for women. It is also to give the men, and this is also one of my messages, we have to give the men a positive perspective. The positive perspective for them is not to be, um, could we go down, help staff balance work and family life? This is really important that the male workers, the male staff members, benefit from a, a better pay leaves to encourage them. It's what we have tried to do and we facilitate as well. Can we go down, please? You can put all the slides. It's fine. I will. Um... Okay. Thank you very much. So longer maternity leave for the women at the Banque de France, better pay for the young men having children, and we facilitate part-time working arrangement. We should not trap ourselves, women, in part-time working because part-time working means you don't go to the top. So there is a balance to find, maybe for some years, it can be good to have a little bit more time with the small children, but then if you stay in the part-time working, you are dead. Then increase the proportion of women in senior position. As you see, uh, there is a strong effort. Uh, the senior position, it was 21% in 2012. We have reached 30% and the current governor, for the, the, we don't have a board, so the, the governor and, and the team around we have decided to uh, increase it systematically and we find it's easy to find good women. They don't candidate themselves spontaneously, but if you do a certain research, if you push them, if you encourage them, you can do it. Then you, we encourage internal uh, promotion. We try to develop pool of women to reach positions of responsibility. The mentoring system was a great success, a great success. You, um, you said before, Ranbeck, that you need role models, etc. Uh, we have to engage with the younger generation and we mix in the mentoring system men and women. And of course, we try also to do uh, a mix in the professions, because if you look at HR, it's overwhelmingly women. Of course, in the part, the industrial part of the bank, because we, we, we produce the banknotes, uh, we have very few women. So we need to cross a little bit the competences. And we decided to offer women uh, because, you know, the tech, and I stopped there, the IT is a new frontier. If you look at who is in the universities in the, as data scientists, uh, people um, learning computer science, etc., it's overwhelmingly a male uh, group of people. So we try to train them inside the bank to offer them perspectives in these, uh, in these, um, in these fields. So, of course, as you said, Doris, there is uh, the, the, the whole society, the, the culture, how people see women's work, but we need also very ambitious and voluntary policies inside our institutions in order to make sure, and I'm glad to see that you have several directors at, at the Österreichische Nationalbank, because actually we were all very sad when we learned that there were no women anymore in the board. So, uh, Forza! as Paola would say, Forza girls. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvie, uh, for this contribution. Uh, I really liked your uh, sentence. You said, it's like uh, going from zero to nothing. And uh, this reminds me to what's happening now in the crisis with uh, real GDP, you know. Uh, people are happy when they see growth rates of three, four, five percent, but they do not see the drop which has happened before. Um, yes, and IT, we have uh, similar problems. Um, a colleague of mine uh, heading the IT department, uh, he always uh, says he would be so much willing to to support uh, women and and uh, uh, but uh, there are so little and uh, it's really difficult to hire also some and uh, there is. Uh, so, in this respect, we have to go a step forward, you know, we have to go to universities or even further uh, to support women uh, to, to grab uh, or to be interested in, in such topics. Uh, and IT with all this digitalization, which is now uh, going on, it's definitely uh, the future of, of many, many professions. You have to have IT skills 
And I think we all, we didn't, in, in the crisis, we all applauded not only uh, the nurses and the doctors, we also applauded our internal IT who made it possible that we can communicate without seeing it, each other and, and uh, installed all our home office places. And I think this is all over the same in all central banks. So last but not least, I come to Anna. Anna Ivkovic, uh, Vice Governor of the National Bank of Serbia. Anna, very much welcomed on this panel uh, and uh, you will contribute uh, the experiences of the Serbian Central Bank in this respect, please. Thank you. I'm glad that uh, uh, all three of us have uh, uh, offered different statistics, so it's not going to overlap. Good afternoon, morning, evening to, to everyone and thank you also for inviting us to, to this first Vienna Economic Dialogue. We are quite proud to say that the National Bank of Serbia is an example of a women-dominated central bank. So women, as you can see, represent 75% of the executive board, so three out of four uh, board members are women. Quite important is that uh, we have she governor, Madam Jorgovan Katabakovic. She is a strong uh, leader and she is in Serbia quite a good uh, uh, role model that we have all uh, uh, reason this, uh, this issue. Now within the manager structure, women account for 57% and also women uh, make 57% of total MBS employees. If we make conclusion just uh, based on these statistics, we can say that uh, we have even gender inequality, but in favor of, uh, of women. Uh, and now, if we compare our statistics with the uh, global numbers, Serbia is doing uh, quite well, which you can see. For this comparison, we can use the mentioned uh, gender balance index uh, uh, conducted by the ONFIF. It uh, simply tracks uh, the, the presence of both women and men in decision-making process in central banks. Already at the first uh, uh, page of this year's gender report, there is a sentence um, saying that central banking uh, gender statistics is a call to, to action. Why? Because uh, although the global statistics is improving toward, uh, toward more women governors, uh, uh, I do believe that since uh, 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 Professor Profeta has done uh, her research that today we have the, the higher number of, uh, of uh, women governors, so it is, uh, but still it is only 18 out of 185 central central banks uh, that are covered by this uh, on fifth uh, uh, report headed by by women this is what you can see on this uh, uh, right table and this is again less than 10 percent meaning that just one in 10 central banks is headed by women uh, the national bank of serbia this is you can see on this uh, uh, middle middle table holds uh, 12 position on this list this puts us uh, in, in the first seven uh, percent at the global level and this is quite quite a good result the reason for not being in, in the first uh, uh, top five is the mentioned gender inequality in favor of women uh, what we also find uh, interesting in the gender report is that in smaller countries this is their conclusion not ours uh, women tend to do better in terms of leading positions maybe this is uh, something that is also related to, to what uh, Professor Profeta found, uh, but simply we have to take into account the characteristics of, uh, of each country. Report also has the part re related to the gender policies in central banks, such as um, uh, gender quota at uh, board level, senior management at entry level, and it shows that um, only a few central banks have these policies put in place. Only one third of central banks measures gender gender pay gaps so this is really uh, uh, not so so good statistics if we can go to to another slide now to contribute uh, thank you very much to contribute to the discussion is it an issue at all in the national bank of serbia you have heard statistics and the number are confirming that we are women-led central bank and i will try to give reasons for for such a good outcome but first i will go quickly through our answers given uh, for this year's on fifth survey. So we don't have a gender quota. We don't have executive nor a staff member who is um, explicitly assigned to matters regarding uh, gender, diversity and inclusion. We don't have a policy uh, to ensure that during the, the hiring process, both female and male candidates are selected for an interview. 
Also, in promoting to vacancies in senior management, we don't have a policy that considers gender. And finally, we don't engage external organization to assess our policies, our practices and outcomes uh, on gender equality. So those were the questions and our answers uh, given to the on survey. Uh, so it has to come naturally. We don't have these policies and yet gender statistics in the National Bank of Serbia is in favor of women. This is what you can see. What we do is that when we are hiring and uh, promoting, we are looking at um, all aspects of, of candidates, uh, whether you are a woman or a man, simply the, the, the work is, is the same. Uh, so from our perspective, any position should be held by a professional with adequate knowledge. And this is why our colleagues heading um, the bank's organizational units are experts with uh, huge uh, uh, knowledge experience, but regardless, I have to say, of the gender. Plus, we created something that was also mentioned, uh, a good working environment. Our colleagues are uh, all free to be seen and, and, and heard quite often. They, they can present their proposals to us uh, to go to many events where they can broaden their views by doing so. Simply, we believe that we are offering uh, fair and equal opportunities to all colleagues. So, but as long as they are willing to do their best and grow together with the, the institution. The second part of the office survey deals with the issue that has been one of the gender obstacles in general, also mentioned at the, at the first session and also at the, the second, and that is maternity leave and um, taking care of families in this respect. Uh, the MBS uh, fully follows the labor law of the Republic of Serbia, and this law stipulates a ban on any kind of discrimination, so direct and indirect for reasons of gender, religion, political or other beliefs, social background. The state in Serbia guarantees a year of paid maternity leave for the first and for the second child. It can be used either by mother or by fa father. Also, this, this was reason uh, as one of the, of, the, of the problems during this uh, session. But of course, if, if mother is not able to take care of child due to justified reasons. For the third and fourth child, paid mater maternity leave in Serbia is prolonged to two years. And this is very important family, family support. In the MBS, we also have a one-time financial assistance in case of a child birth or a child adoption. This is also quite important. Plus, we offer them the mentioned the remote working, working from home, flexi, part-time work. And this was uh, so not just during the, the, the pandemic, but we, we offer it uh, constantly. These facilities are available to both women and men, but we simply found them to be important to help women to better what they need, balance between their work and the family obligations. If we broaden the picture uh, to and look at the state level, uh, statistics at the state level, gender is an issue, of course, at the, at the country level where women uh, uh, make more than 51% of the population. So citizens of Serbia are enjoying gender equality. It is guaranteed uh, to them by the constitutions. A constitution, sorry. We have several laws covering this issue, gender related strategies, coordination bodies, and Serbia was the first non-EU country to introduce the gender equality index. We do follow the, the movements of this index and it is helping us in creating uh, better policies uh, in this area. Of course, the EU welcomed this as an important step in bringing uh, Serbian policies in this area in line with the, with the EU standards. The index measures six areas that are, that are important, so it is health, money, knowledge, work, time and power, and it shows the index, index is showing the rising trend in women's participation in many areas, but especially in the domain of political power for members of the government and members of the parliament. This is why uh, so Serbia has uh, climbed uh, at the global gender gap report that was also mentioned by the dep deputy governor from from uh, 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 Iceland. Uh, it was published in Mer uh, March this year. It has shown that Serbia has climbed by, by uh, 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 in the group uh, within the uh, five most improved countries in the overall index. So we are now at the second place when we look at the Eastern Europe and Central Asia. Also, if you look at the composition of our government, we do have the Prime Minister, uh, lady Prime Minister, we do also have 10 females out of 21 ministers, and this makes us to be one of the most gender balanced government in the world. To conclude, in the MBS, we have 
the dominance of, uh, of uh, women, but not because of gender, but because of the way they do uh, their job. Our modern governor says that um, through generation, uh, through generations, a lot has been done to to raise social awareness about the fact that there are no special women's rights, but the obligation of society and, of course, uh, uh, each individual to consistently respect the basic human rights. Doris, with this, I finish. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Anna, for, for this contribution. Um, and uh, it confirms uh, what uh, Paula has said uh, at the beginning, that Serbia is obviously a front runner in this respect. Now, I would like to um, come to the second round of questions. The second round uh, will come a little bit closer to the session title, which is uh, Central Bank Decisions by Committee Does Gender Matter? And uh, so, First question maybe is uh, work. If if there are more women in a committee, does the work does the committee works differently? Is there any difference uh, and why, and in which direction? And when it comes to central banking, when this committee uh, is um, a decision, a monetary policy decision making committee, um, in the euro system, this is. Uh, uh, the council uh, is the outcome different. Uh, would uh, more women make a different decision on on monetary policy decisions? Would they wait longer or shorter with an interest rate increase? Uh, are they more patient? Um, do they look at different uh, indicators? So this uh, will be uh, the content of this round. And I asked Paula first uh, to give us uh, her research results on this uh, important question. Paula? Uh, actually, the question is very interesting. So we also wanted in our research to try to understand, first of all, what's the situation and uh, possibly also the elements that determine the presence of women on uh, monetary uh, policy committees. But then once, uh, uh, once you have understood this, so we move uh, to the second part, which is, do they matter? So do they make different decisions? Do they uh, implement uh, different policies uh, and so forth and so on? Honestly, this is a question uh, uh, very complicated uh, to analyze because uh, you know, there is the, 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 the typical uh, something which, uh, which uh, um, in economics uh, we, uh, we call uh, the endogeneity problem. So when you see that uh, a certain share uh, of women uh, on committees uh, um, is uh, correlated or associated with a certain type of decisions, uh, it's very difficult to understand uh, if this is really uh, a causal relationship. So, these women are deciding this policy, or are leading in this direction, or it's uh, because uh, other things happen that may have an impact both on the presence of women and on the policy implemented, or even sometimes uh, a reverse causality may, may happen. So, the fact that there is a certain policy may end up for some reason uh, with other mechanism in, deter, in uh, influencing the, the presence of uh, women. So, um, so this is a difficult methodological, it's a difficult question. So I, I would like to, uh, so having said this, so we uh, nevertheless tried to, to, to see with our data what we could find. And uh, in this, um, so what we do uh, is uh, we study, we estimate the, uh, the typical um, um, variable, which is, uh, we estimated the policy variable, which is the, uh, the interest rate, the central bank uh, key policy rate, so the short-term interest rate uh, in, uh, for each country. Uh, the data, um, we consider the interest rate uh, the yearly, uh, so at the year time, uh, this is columns uh, one to three, while from four to six, uh, we, uh, we have observations at the, uh, at the quarterly uh, level. Uh, and seven to nine is just a replication, but using a different uh, uh, estimation uh, model. So what we do here uh, is we try to understand uh, if uh, there is uh, um, yeah, there is a role for the presence of women in understanding what is the uh, the policy 
the policy rate, so the short term uh, interest rate in each country and in each uh, period of time. So uh, the share, so we included the share of women, we included the classical variables that are always considered, of course, relevant in explaining the, uh, the policy rate, which are uh, inflation and uh, the output gap, uh, the output gap and the, uh, the inflation rate. Uh, but we add this term, which is the first line, which is the share of women times inflation. So basically, this is the, uh, the variable that we are interested in, because we would like to understand uh, here with this interaction term if uh, um, uh, countries in places in central banks where um, for a given level of inflation uh, they, uh, the presence of women on monetary committees so different shares so different level of the presence of women matter in uh, in the uh, in the type of policy so in the interest rates which is uh, decided by uh, by the committee uh, and what we find is that this interaction term, so our first line, is always positively and highly significant. So this means that, uh, uh, this suggests that for the same level of inflation, because we control for that, so for the same level of inflation, central banks with a higher share of women in monetary policy committees, so monetary policy boards, set um, higher level of uh, of the uh, of the interest rate okay so this is our main result in this uh, in this uh, in the second part so the higher presence of women uh, is can be associated uh, with a higher inflation aversion with a tougher monetary monetary policy let's say but in general if uh, uh, we, we find this very, very critical, I mean, very strong results because it's robust to different specifications that you may find in the paper. So we find that the presence of women is associated with somehow something which we call a more oakish behavior in, uh, in, monetary, in monetary policy and more aggressive in fighting inflation. Uh, that's uh, somehow also in line, uh, you know, with the general, with the, with the, with the well-known literature suggesting that women are more risk averse than men uh, and take more uh, somehow conservative uh, decisions. Uh, we, of course, with, with our data, we, we cannot explain exactly uh, the, the, the link with, for example, with the risk aversion, but it goes uh, in, in the same direction that we had, that has been documented by, uh, by literature, uh, for example, in psychological or behavioral, uh, behavioral uh, economics. So um, looking at the coefficients, it seems that the effect is quite, is quite big. So it seems that, for example, a one percentage point increase in inflation results in an increase of by 0.3 percentage points higher interest rate in a central bank with a share of women on monetary policy committees members of 50 percent as opposed to one uh, with a share of 10 uh, percent so it's uh, the, the magnitude also the effect is quite large uh, want to be very long here but uh, if you look at governor uh, it's uh, uh, it's again we find that this uh, positive this uh, uh, this interaction terms positively and highly significant also when instead of taking the share of women on monetary policy committees we uh, look at the presence of women uh, governor and again for different types of uh, of estimation so uh, somehow, uh, of course, we have not solved completely the endogeneity problem. Although we control, for example, for the lagged policy rate of the of the previous period, so we have not completely solved this because in order to completely solve this problem of endogeneity, you need a kind of exogenous shock which increases the presence of women and as committees in these positions for whatever reason exogenously, and then you can see. You you can analyze what they do in terms of outcomes, in terms of decisions, in terms of performance, which is not uh, our case here. But the relationship is quite strong and significant across different specifications and controlling for many variables. So this is the main result when we go to uh, to the policy side, let's say, to the, to the decision-making side. And I would like to add that in general, uh, uh, this type, uh, this idea is also somehow related to general results from research, which have been analyzed also in other contexts, let's say differently from, from central bank boards, because 
what we have found, and it's quite, uh, let's say, um, uh, shared among uh, among uh, economic in the economic literature, is that a higher presence of women on boards, on decision making boards, even for example in business, uh, so not necessarily on central banks, but in other contexts, has a certain uh, has a three uh, important. Um, Three important outcomes, three important consequences in terms of the performance, in terms of the outcomes that we can, that we can also measure. First of all, has an important effect on the selection. So uh, it is true from a large body of research that having more women uh, on uh, in on boards and decision-making positions may imply a different selection of the members of the board. Not only women are because they are qualified. Typically, when they are appointed to this position, have a very high level of qualifications and uh, and competence, etc. But also the men uh, members. Uh, may be better qualified because of the presence of women. So it's a kind of uh, uh, selection overall effect which is positively, uh, which is uh, uh, which is positive. And uh, um, this is uh, something that we have found also, uh, let's say, in other contexts. The second effect is on performance. And here, as I told you before, we really have this uh, now methodological channel uh, challenge because uh, uh, many studies are not clearly conclusive because it's very difficult to identify, you know, the causal impact of the presence of women on outcomes. It's very difficult to say it's because of women that we observe this outcome. In the context of central banks that I, uh, I mean, the results that I showed you before, uh, uh, this endogenity problem is now solved because we really control for many things and because, uh, um, because uh, because of the nature of the of the process which reduces let's say this uh, uh, at least the reverse causality uh, causality problem uh, the third element is the agenda so the other element which is typically found by many research to be affected by the presence of women by what we call a gender balanced leadership let's say because it doesn't we are not talking about having more women, uh, having women substituting the men, but having a more balanced um, composition of the of the sport is in the agenda. So things that are discussed, things that are uh, you know put into the attention that are in the agenda, because in many cases, uh, without the presence of women, some uh, some items are not even uh, are not even uh, let's say discussed. So uh, we reference to this. Uh, so these are my let's say three uh, bullet points for uh, for uh, um, promoting a, a, a gender balanced leadership in decision making positions and boards in general. And we can see that even in the context of uh, of boards of uh, of central banks like we did here with the monetary policy, with reference to the monetary policy, we have found evidence that. You know this uh, uh, kind of effect is is in place, and in particular, women seems to be more risk averse than men. They, they take this type of uh, decisions. So these are the data. I mean that tells us uh, this. So we probably what we need to, uh, and uh, what are uh, if you know we need better data and better uh, yes better information and better data to really understand the process so why we arrive why we get the, uh, this type of results but this is you know researchers as me are always looking for for better data and more details in the paper for example we do also some more specific analysis with respect to uh, to the central bank in Sweden because they have more detailed data available to researchers that allows us to find support for the same conclusion, but you know in a, in a better uh, with a better explanation in terms of uh, the process behind. So uh, I think that uh, it's uh, it's do it's only a first step to let's say this result, but it's already something where. Probably, uh, I will be happy also to hear your, uh, you know, your uh, your uh, your uh, impression and uh, your comments on uh, why and how from the inside this type uh, this type of uh, effects or decisions may happen and what is the exact mechanism producing uh, this outcome. Thank you. Thank you, Paula. This is the right panel to give an answer to your question. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> we come now to to Ranve, and you Ranve, you told us at the beginning that you have been the uh, first deputy governor uh, in the Central Bank of Iceland. In the meantime, uh, you are more, so uh, there are uh, uh, more uh, uh, female colleagues uh, on this level. Uh, can you confirm these research uh, findings of Paola from your experience in the in the most recent years, or uh, was it completely the opposite? Uh, you mean the uh, outcome of committees yeah. and uh, the monetary what? policy decisions? Were yeah, more, yeah, yes. Were more I must talkish uh, then uh, if uh, there will be more men in the committee. Yes, uh, I, I think we, I will come to that, but I will just start say, by saying that when I started thinking about this se session's topic, uh, I went through, uh, uh, I went uh, from uh, mm -hmm. thinking about the leg legitimacy of committees to, as, as you ask, whether it matters for, for the policy outcomes that committees are gender balanced. And I must admit also that uh, on the policy outcome, I just had not thought about that it put, before. Uh, it put me a little off balance because I always just viewed that the need, there is a need for women in committees in, as, it, as a terms of democracy. That is, in a democratic society, it is of course vital that women should be active participants. So the question, does, it, does the inclusion of women affect the decisions? or policy orientation, I had to uh, uh, pile through some, some articles uh, and uh, my take from what I, I've read and, uh, is that this question of, of, it, of whether it matters that women are, are present has been debated. Uh, it, you know, uh, in terms of voting behavior, behavior uh, the research Results are at least as those I have seen are inconsistent across the literature, because some studies have shown that women are more likely to be doves, while other studies show that they are more likely to be policy hawks, as as Paula's results show. But I, I thought this, you know, even though gender may not have a quantifiable impact on committee's policy orientation. I mean, if, if, if whether it matters uh, if they are hawks or, or those, I think bringing a diverse group of people into the decision making process is important for the committee's quality of work and its legitimacy and for monetary policy is something that is very important for monetary policy for its credibility. So interestingly, the latest research I found finds that having more women on the FOMC has positive effects in other ways than the easily measurable outcome. So as there seems to be a direct link between gender diversity on committees and the quality of the committee's work. Greater gender diversity seems to be associated with a larger number of topics addressed in the discourse and in the length of the discussions. Uh, something in line with what the President Lugard said just uh, said, we need women as carriers of medi me and meditators medita of trust. Um, anyway, uh, but I think uh, these results are also in line with what we have seen, what I have seen uh, in studies on gender balance and corporate leadership. Because that research indicates that the per performance is inconclusive with studies yielding conflicting findings. On one hand, studies indicate that gender diversity brings a broader mix of knowledge and background, which enriches the conversation in the boardroom, as well as improving governance and strategy on social and environmental issues. So this te tells me that the measure of the impact of a better gender balance must not be too narrow, it must not be limited to the to direct outcomes of such as voting patterns in MPCs or in financial performance in corporations. So coming to the uh, Icelandic Monetary Policy Committee, um, the 
this, the, the findings that the, the, the that the, the decisions or the outcomes is inconclusive it, it fits my my uh, view uh, or that experience Iceland's uh, monetary policy committee has been in operation for 12 years and it has five members and of the nine members that have served to date three have been women and most often only one woman at the time uh, and it is obvious that the Iceland monetary policy committee provides too, provides too few observations to enable a scientific estimate but I cannot see that the women who sit on the committee or have done so in the past have diverged from the men in their decisions. So uh, the, sh the long short answer is that women definitely need to be represented on uh, monetary policy committees, but they do not need to have different opinions from men in order to justify their presence there. We need women to be there as role models we need diversity to enrich the conversation and improve the decision making process and we definitely need diversity to ensure the committee's credibility. Thank you. Great. Anne, I couldn't agree more because you have split it up uh, the issue in two questions uh, which are to my mind also uh, completely different ones. Uh, the one is uh, um, should women uh, be represented in these committees? And the answer is definitely yes, but uh, because uh, they should be represented, because uh, they should have their share in these committees and their vote and their voice. And the other question is, uh, would the outcome be different? So, Sylvie, would the outcome be different or is the outcome different? I am a little bit puzzled. Uh, if we begin to say that there are uh, qualities or characteristics for women as a block or men as a block, I think we should a little bit refrain from entering into this uh, category. Uh, there are women uh, I have nothing with, to do with and men I very much respect. So we should not make these categories. So if we can begin to look at the slides, I would, I suggest that we, thank you, we stop here. We have launched uh, uh, an ECB listens exercise, uh, which is a completely new exercise. And this is something very important for me. When you compare central banks throughout the world, they don't have the same mandate. And they have degrees of openness toward the society, which can be very different. Because some years ago, central banks were closed world discussing uh, at the maximum with experts, but not with the society at large. So what I, when I tried to prepare this discussion, I said, well, actually, what are women expecting outside? Instead of us saying, because we are women, it will change something. And this is a very uh, interesting message because, first of all, uh, women don't, do not answer as much as, uh, as men. I don't know why there is something missing in the, in the slides, but uh, in, the, in the context of, of the ongoing ECB listens exercise, we know that when we make surveys, women don't respond. Above all, the women above 55 or even between 34 and, 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 and 54. The younger is a little bit better. So first of all, they are not really interested in what we are doing. We have to, to be aware of that. So we have not even reached their mind. Second point, when they express their priorities, um, they have very tangible, oh, thank you. It is now completed. Uh, so women are underrepresented. They don't feel concerned by what we are doing, which is as such uh, a worrying message. And their concern are more concrete or practical, declining purchasing power, concerns about the worsening of economic output, unemployment and job, which for the euro area is not as such the mandate, even if it can be part of the secondary objective of the ECB and the euro system, growing inequality and poverty, climate change. So it's very interesting to see that we have to be careful, and Paula, I, I know your, 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 your studies, and I put them even in, in my slides, but as you are here, I'm not going to explain. 
But we have to be careful because when we discuss on monetary policy bodies, what are we talking about? Are we just talking on the level of inflation or do we have a 2% target or a symmetry? It's far away from the, 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 the concerns of the people. If we can move to the next slide, please. It is a survey we made at the Banque de France for France in the framework of the ECB license uh, events as, as well. It is clear that women are more worried than men about the economic situation. You can see it, they answer 88% to, uh, and it is 79 for men. They put social exclusion and poverty among the top economic priorities. And I have not put all the statistics we have, but in, in France, we are responsible for over indebted households. And all the statistics we have for the under over indebted households show that the women who are alone with children are in the worst possible situation. So they don't have time to care about what is the decision of the monetary policy. They, they just want to, to, to they struggle for, for life and for their daily life. And the same for the financial situation. This is something, in my opinion, we should really keep in mind. Then next slide, please. So why promoting diversity? First of all, because I think they, no, thank you. Uh, I think these faces are important. The reason why I've put so many pictures in my slides is that you see the first picture with only men in gray suits and, and, and other faces, another face for central banking. And of course, it was said before very well, when you have diversity, you have a better pool of talent. Uh, first of all, because you bring diversity, but also because you made the effort to try to diversify. And the fact that you try to diversify brings you a, a, a very diverse set and, and you go and you search for the good ones. You don't simply duplicate the, the cooptation systems, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, and, and as Isabel Schnabel said, it's, it's equality of opportunity, but also equality of outcome of the decision. Margarita Delgado also uh, said we cannot waste uh, in aging societies above all uh, such a, a huge amount of talent. And then my last slide, which is my favorite, not only because I like Christine very much, but because I think she, she introduced something new. Um, as communication is de facto a monetary policy tool with the forward guidance, um, it makes a lot of difference. Uh, we had great presidents before, uh, Jean-Claude Trichet and Mario Draghi. It's not to compare with the previous guys who were sitting there. But look at the way Christine is communicating. Look at what she said. And she tried to destroy the oaks and doves uh, dichotomy, which is as such a message. And maybe the best uh, achievement we can have is to rely on women to connect better with the concerns of half of the population struggling to educate the children, to uh, put uh, food in the fridge and to be there on all fronts even when they are working. It is maybe a, a, a way to rebuild trust. I don't know, maybe it's not scientific, but I was really impressed last year by the results of Angela Merkel, of uh, the Prime Minister of New Zealand, of in, in communicating in, in crisis situation, even the Queen uh, in the UK, it was fascinating how they communicated if you compare with some words used by other governments. So what I hope is that we can have a wiser uh, board when you introduce a more diverse profile and we don't talk only about uh, hopes and, and those, but as Christine introduced uh, about the, the, the holes and uh, we know since the ancient Greek that uh, it's an important animal for the wisdom. So thank you very much. Thanks, Sylvie. I come now to Anna. I want to give you already a question from the chat from Isabel Strauss-Kahn. Can the situation in Serbia be explained by wage level between the private and public sector? meaning men prefer to go to the private sector where they get higher compensation. So, Anna, Thank please. You. I want to say that I could not agree more with what uh, Vice Governor of Banque de France has, uh, has already said, and also to, to agree with the um, Deputy Governor of Iceland that, that we also have read many 
uh, papers, but we also have seen inconsistency in the, in the conclusion. So if you would uh, ask me to conclude, I would really not be able to conclude. I will give you just uh, a few statistics uh, numbers from, from the Serbia and also uh, uh, results that we have achieved. So then we can all make some conclusions out of Serbian case. Uh, within our history uh, of 137 years, the bank has had 29 governors, of whom only two women. The first one was appointed uh, back in 2003, served only several months, seven months. Second one is our modern governor. I mentioned uh, Madame Yorgovanka Tabakovic, now in her second term, so far nine years. So. The fact that she is the governor with the, the highest term in the in the last century uh, is confirmation, at least for me, that our modern governor is doing a better job than her main colleagues had done previously. But it seems that it is not uh, uh, only confirmation for me, but also to the, as you can see, the banker magazine. So a decade ago, this is something that you can see from uh, from this. Uh, left chart. Um, in Serbia, we were analyzing the causes and consequences of the dinar depreciation of 8% annually. We were addressing the factors of double digit inflation. See, uh, here you can see it rising unemployment rate, rising MPS. And um, at that time, men were at almost all position in the country. It is not by, by chance that we put uh, the exchange rate of the dinar here in the middle because it came as something that uh, had the huge stabilization effect on all macroeconomic uh, variables. Then uh, 2012, we had political changes in Serbia and we got new leaders or, or to be precise, we voted for changes back in 2012. We were not satisfied with the situation in country and at that time new country leaders simply made a complete positive transformation of the economy and um, brought uh, a new model of dynamic and sustainable growth. When I say say new leaders, I, I here mean uh, our, our Madam Governor for sure as the number one and our President Vucic. So, as I said, it did not came, uh, come as a surprise when our governor was awarded by the Banker magazine as the best world and also the European governor for 2020. And uh, she really likes that it was uh, 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 by the votes of her colleague governors. So they concluded that stability of Serbian financial sector as well as um, broader success of Serbian economy owes much to our governor's work. So they also assessed that the result legacy of high and volatile infl inflation, because we did have hyperinflation back in 90s, high MPS, you can see it also on, on this graph, together with the improved buffers in terms of FX reserves. They even uh, grow during the, the pandemic. Those are all huge drivers of the growing confidence in the Serbian economy. The banker then also concludes um, that the most remarkable accomplishments of the MBS uh, Serbia have under the guidance of, uh, let's say, she governor Jorgovan Katabakovic. Also, if you look at responsibility of central banks, uh, uh, I do believe that someone mentioned the, the payment system. Also, so each central bank, uh, uh, almost each, ensures a safe payment system, but our governor simply vision for Serbian citizens was to initiate instant payment system that reaches everyone 24 hours, seven days, so all year round. It is wi uh, widely used, it is easy to be used, and it is 100% safe. So although there is a sort of consensus that um, new and modern technologies are more uh, a man's job, in Serbia this is not the case. Also, I will add um, one conclusion that at the very beginning, so back in August 2012, our Madam Governor recognized where the problems were and she started to resolve them. She changed the approach to, to conducting uh, monetary policy and because of that we have achieved much more at much lower expense. And today you can see also from, from those charts, citizens in Serbia are enjoying full monetary and financial stability. If you ask our Madam Governor, she would say that uh, one person alone, no matter how smart and brave she or he is, cannot do the job alone. And this, I do believe, fits to what um, Vice Governor of the Bank de France uh, said. Policies are for people, they affect people, and uh, simply they, they should matter. 
regarding the question, what we have done in Serbia simply uh, ha uh, we have to, to, to take into account the difference between the, uh, let's say, um, education in the private sector and in the, in, the, in the government sector. In the government sector, in Serbia still, we have much uh, better education, ed educated people working. So they, they are, their salaries uh, are, are uh, uh, at the moment at a slightly higher level. But what we have seen is uh, the, 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 the strong reduction in differences between the salaries in the government and the private sector. This is because of the, of, uh, 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 the investment cycle that we started in Serbia back in 2015. It is uh, mostly private investment driven. So we do see these differences uh, shrinking between the salaries in the government and in the private sector. But still we do have more educated people working for the government, uh, uh, not for the for the private sector. We do still have this difference, but this difference, uh, this gap is closing. This is with what we are quite satisfied. Our president is uh, for sure the uh, uh, the person who is the most satisfied because he is quite satisfied with the um, uh, factories, companies being opened in Serbia. So people going uh, and having uh, higher salaries, but it is the combination, I do believe that it was mentioned at the first se session, the combination, coordination of monetary fiscal policies of the whole team. So, as, as our Madam Governor said, no one can do the job alone. So, it is coordination, it is the teamwork, and then um, why not, why we have to have just, uh, uh, let's say, cherry pick between inflation and growth. Why, why can't we have to... Uh, have it all in Serbia. We do have it all low, stable inflation and dynamic growth. Uh, uh, we will have uh, six percent for sure this year. Last year, minus one percent. So it is not such a such a low base. I I, I, I do hope that I uh, answered the, the, the question. If it is not clear enough, I will try to, to add something up. We have reached the end of our session and it was really a pleasure to have you here in Vienna, at least virtually. I remember a sentence from the web page of the International Women's Day, which is, uh, we have only reached our goal if we no longer need to commemorate Women's Day. So I want to transfer this uh, to this conference. I would uh, like to conclude by saying we have only reached our goal if we no longer need a separate conference on gender, money and finance, although it was such a pleasure to have you here. Thanks a lot uh, for your contribution uh, and I hope to see you soon somewhere. In uh, Wien, in Wien, to... in Wien, I disagree, we need a of conference, in a real one. <laughs> Thank you very much and have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.